Haribo. So, continuing reading from Sri Guru Darshan, we're on page 488. Transcending time. Transcending time. Bhagavad Gita talks about five subjects. Five subject matters. Ishvar, Supreme Lord. Jiva, living entity. Maya, this world. Karma, fruit of action, action and reaction, the law of karma. And lastly, Kal, time. Time. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Kalo smi lokakshaya krit pravriddo. Time I am the destroyer of the worlds. Krishna in this form as cosmic time. Creation, maintenance and destruction is all because of the cycle of material time. What is born into this world must also pass out of this world. Bhagavad Gita Na sato vidyate bhavo na bhavo vidyate sata ubayora pidristo andas tvanayos tatvadarshibi Those who have seen the truth know that which is material can never be eternal, spiritual. That which is spiritual or eternal can never be material. That which is asat, temporary, made of matter, it's ephemeral. It's like a you know, you see like a spark of dust or something appearing and then you can't see it again. You know, like sometimes you see like particles of dust through a screen. You see them and then light changes and then it's gone. This is like the mature world. It appears and it disappears. And all our efforts to build it all up are destroyed by time. Time is undefeated. All these great civilizations now in rebels. What lasts beyond time? So that's the question. What transcends time? Material time and spiritual time are two different things. Uh, the scriptures teach us. There's material time and spiritual time. Spiritual time is eternal, present. Eternally present. That's why if you want to live a better life, they say be here now. <laughs> right? Be in the present. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, what does he say? Forget the past that sleeps and never the future dream at all, but act with in times that are with thee, and progress thee shall call. You want to make progress? Act in the present. But now there's also a danger in that. Preya and Shreya, two sides in life. Preya means immediate gratification. I want to, you know, eat ice cream and pizza all day long, I'm going to get a fat. I'm not thinking about getting unhealthy, having heart failure. I just want to immediately gratify my senses. Shreya means, okay, hold off to, for the immediate gratification for the future gain. So spiritual life, we, inevitably we have this conception of past, present, future. That's all bound by material time. And as long as we're in this kind of material cycle of time, we are going to, you know, we're bound to death, destruction, demise, to collapse, decay, entropy. Right? Everything has like an arc. Comes up like a rainbow. Ooh, it's so nice, so nice. Wee, ah! Wee, ah! <laughs> right? Roller coaster ride of life. Sangsara dukkha jalido patitasya kama krodari nakrama karir kavalikra tasya durvasa nani gatitasya narasresha Chaitanya chandra mama dehi padavalambam. Who can protect us from this sangsara? Dukkha. Suffering in material existence, Chaitanya Chandra's lotus feet, Mahaprabhu's lotus feet. Therefore, O oh Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I am suffering in the sangsara, attacked by so many sharks and crocodiles of lust, anger, greed. Please, I take shelter of your lotus feet. Then we can be protected. So Krishna says, time I am. So it's an interesting thing that time is not our enemy unless God is our enemy. Because Krishna is time. So how can time be our enemy? If you think, I'm always fighting against time. In one way, you're fighting God. <laughs> God appears as time. It's one of his expansions. You know, like everything. Krishna says, what does he say in the Bhagavad Gita? Aham sarvasva prabhavo. Everything is emanating from me. Bhagavatam. 
Aha, me va, sa, me va, gre. Everything is coming from me. And in the Bhagavad Gita, he specifically talks about what things are directly emanating from him. Time. Arjuna says, what's happening here? Krishna tells him, why are you thinking you are the doer? I am the doer, I have to kill all my family. He said they're already dead. They're like a, a negative of an image. And it's gradually eroding. Snapshots taken. This is your, your life story. And now you're looking at it and it's gradually fading away. Fading away, pixel by pixel with the memory. We, what's, what's eternal is everything. Now in the Gita, these five subject matters, they're all eternal tattvas, eternal truths. There's always going to be the law of karma. There's always going to be a God. There's always a soul. There's always time, right? There's always maya. But one thing we can do is the soul can go from this world to a higher realm. We can transcend material time, karma, and maya. We can transcend it. So that's what the process is being given. How to transcend time. One of the things to do in that process is to understand that time is not our enemy. Time is actually, if, if you align yourself properly with it, it's something that's your very dear friend. And it's giving you a lesson. What is the lesson given by time? Value. Learn to value the moments you have and if it was infinite in this life, if we had infinite time, we wouldn't value the time we have, we'd do so many random things. No, sacrifice the unnecessary. Surrender. What am I doing in my day? Is this necessary or not? What's the priority? What's really valuable? And follow that. And if we realize that Krishna is time, God is time, serve Him. Now I have this time every moment. Let it be used for your service. Anukulyena Krishna Anushilanam. Bhakti Rutama. At every moment, like why is it saying like a stream of honey pouring poured from a jar or oil? It's unbroken. So the time we have should be used to serve time. If you want to serve time, it's serving God. <laughs> so there's a verse in Sastra, how does it transcend time? Ayur Harati Vaipungsam Udyanastan Chayanaso. When the sun and moon rise and set. It shows the passing of time. The sun rises, goes up, sets. The moon rises, goes up, set. It's the clock of this world. You know? The hour hand. Tick, 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 time passing. The hour and minute hand, sun and the moon. But those who are serving. Sri Krishna by engaging in his divine transcendental kata discourses, hearing, chanting, remembering, they are not affected by this passing of time. Everyone else's their life is diminished. But those who are engaged in Kirtan, Harikata, Krishna, Seva, Bhakti, for them they get, are granted eternal life. Janma Karma Chame Divyam Evam Yoveti Tatvata Tyaktva Dehang Punar Janma Neti Mameti Sorjuna. We have this body, this body is material, it has to leave us. Nasato vidyate babo. It can't be eternal. We're going to have to die. But we can give up our attachment to this body and transcend this material attachment and then achieve eternal life. So that's what, if we understand Krishna's divine nature, janma karma chame divyam, we can also realize our own divine nature. Like, if you want self realization, you also need God realization. If you just want self-realization, Krishna realization, then your self-realization is going to, it's only half the picture. It's like someone gave you a postcard of the truth. This is the truth, the absolute truth, but it's ripped in half. Self-realization. They're keeping the other side to themselves, God realization. How are you going to, you don't realize God, then it's like you're just realizing the small part. You have one part of the jigsaw puzzle. How are you going to see the whole picture? So understanding Krishna, Krishna consciousness means understanding Krishna. It's not the International Society for Self-Consciousness. International Society for Narcissism. No, it's like we are not the center of reality. We are the servant of reality. We are the servant of Sri Krishna. And Krishna manifests his time to teach us a lesson that each moment is a precious gift. Labdva sudurlabhamidam bahusambhavante. 
Each moment is a very precious gift, especially in this human form of life. It's very rarely achieved in the cycle of time. We go through 8,400,000 species of life in the cycle of karma and samsara. But from an ant to a kitanga, it's like the smallest insect, to Brahma. We, we start as Lord Brahma. Oh, now I'm, we want to be like God. You want to create everything? Okay, I'm like Brahma. And then you fall all the way down to become an ant and then to a kitanga, the smallest insect. And then you go back up and up and down in this Ferris wheel of life. It's described to be like a Ferris wheel. You get on the ride. You go up and you go down and you go up and you go down. Sometimes a king, sometimes a pauper. Chidin Charitamrita describes this. Sometimes a beggar, sometimes a king, sometimes a merchant, sometimes a warrior. All these different cycles and then we forget it. And we start over. Because we do not value it properly, then Krishna has they have to wipe the slate clean and start over. We live our life wasting our time. And then, okay, you wasted the opportunity, then okay, try again, start again, start again. It's like we're in this infinite loop until we break the cycle. That's why I was talking yesterday about being a rebel. We want to be the real rebels, breaking out of the matrix. But to do that, it's inside of us. The, the matrix is not the machine outside. The machine is not at fault. Maya is not at fault. Maya, Maya is yantra, rudrani, maya. The matrix is real. We are trapped in it. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, yantra, rudrani, maya. Yantra is a machine. It's translated as a machine. So we're trapped on the machine of material nature. But it's not the machine trapping us. It's within our own false ego, our own ahankar, avidya, ignorance, built internally, built up ourselves. All we have to do is sw flip the switch. But we don't want to. Ignorance is bliss. We'd rather stay trapped in the machine because on the machine we think, oh, I'm going to get some nice cookie. I'm going to get, oh, beautiful wife, beautiful husband, baby, family, car, work, oh, position, I'm going to get a, a promotion, and our time is dripping away. It's the hourglass is turned over and sand is falling down, and we are getting closer and closer to death. You sang the song. Kamala dhala jala jivana talamala. Life is hanging like a drop of water on the edge of a lotus petal waiting. You see a drop of water on the edge of the leaf. It's hanging right on the tip and you can see it gradually building up. All the water is and the weight is increasing and it's getting closer and closer and closer and it falls off. Seems like it falls off in a moment, right? Life is like a drop of water on the edge of a lotus leaf. How long does it stay on the edge of the lotus leaf? It's gone. It drops. So it's just like that. Because if you look at the time dilation, you know, we've been in this cycle for millions and millions of lifetimes. Then what's a lifetime? hundred years. hundred years for our time, like a mosquito, you know, born and dead, born and dead, born and dead, born and dead. If you look at it, you zoom out like Google Earth. Zoom out to Google Earth and Google creation. <laughs> and here we are in this little speck of dust, appearing and disappearing, appearing and disappearing. It's like this speck of dust is appearing and disappearing. Earth, four billion years, gone. Another time it was created, gone. Krishna is eating it all. Krishna likes to eat <laughs> everything. Krishna says, give it all to me. All creation is entering into his belly and then appearing again from his pores. Why is it saying that all the universes are residing within Krishna's belly? Because he eats it all. <laughs> Damodar. Everything is residing within Krishna's belly. Because he eats it all. All the universes gobble it up. Bhagavad Gita, which shows his universal form, everything enters within him, and then everything is part of his transcendental body. It's all part of him. But if we can break that cycle of our own self-centeredness, this is the problem, that I am the center of creation. Everything should serve me. I am the sun around which everything should orbit and revolve and uh, satisfy my desires. All my senses and everyone I am in touch with, my family, my friends, Everyone should help me be happy. We have to try to break that cycle, rebel against that internal cycle of avidya. And the idea that we are separate from Krishna also. Right? What is the verse? All this cycle of time and destruction creates fear. And it, the root cause is to think that I am dvitiya binivesh. Absorption is something other than reality, or other than Sri Krishna. And bring our focus back by taking shelter of Sri Guru, then we can realize, no, I am just a part of that transcendental entity. 
and he is giving me a chance to exit this cycle of material time. Now one thing is Mahaprabhu is not trying to preach liberation. Mahaprabhu says even that's a selfish desire. It's not that, oh, I want to transcend time to get out of samsara. Transcending time means what? Transcending time means the fourth verse of Shikshastakam. This is how we transcend time. Nadanam najanam na sundarim kavitam va jagadisha janmaye mama janmani janmani shwara bhavatad bhakti mahaitu kitoi I will take birth again and again. This is my destiny. But in every birth, may I simply be filled of unalloyed devotion to your lotus feet. Let me just serve you. Then I don't want wealth, followers, position, name, fame, scholarly qualities, respect, adoration. No. I just want bhakti for you. If I have bhakti for you, then everything else is covered. Everything else is attained. Because Krishna becomes our property. Krishna says, Ye yatamang prapadyante tangsa taiva bajamyaham mama vartmanu vartante manusha parta sarvasa. However you worship me, I reciprocate. So if we offer ourselves entirely to Krishna, He is bound to offer Himself entirely to us, then Krishna becomes our property. That's what Yashoda, Yashoda conquered Krishna with her love, even though Krishna is Ajit, never been conquered. Any demon ever beat Krishna? Never. But Madhya Shoda, his, you know, with a thread of rope, bound his waist and tied him. Even though all the universes resided within him, even though he's unconquerable, the supreme source of all existence, and yet he was bound by Madhya Shoda's devotion. So if we offer ourselves wholeheartedly to Krishna, Krishna, we become part of that supreme whole. We become the divorce, you know, we're divorced from Krishna. Bayam Duti Abhinivesh. We are divorced from reality. And we are in samsara, in maya, in the matrix. And if we are learn to be able to break that cycle, rebel against it, no, I'm no longer going to go in this infinite loop of samsara, passing life after life, stuck by time, trapped by this cycle of material time. Instead, let's break out. And how do we break out? By taking shelter of Sri Krishna's lotus feet, developing this bhakti. It's not like uh, people want rebellion to be something very exciting, you know, like, oh, let's go fight with something, you know. We have to fight with our own internal demons and surrender with love and devotion. We have to fight that internal battle, yes. But it's not like we have to go overthrow the government and now we're rebels. No. This is all maya. It's all illusion. Break that demonic tendency within the heart that, oh, I want to just be... What is the nature of the demon described in Bhagavad Gita? Ishwaro hamaham bogi siddhoham balavangsuki. I'll be perfect, powerful. I'll become the most powerful man, the most beautiful, the most wealthy. I'll be God. I will do sacrifices. I will give charity. This is all the false ego. We have to break that false ego. No, Krishna. Stita duli sadrasang mang vichinta. Make me a particle of dusty lotus feet. Gurudev is waiting to give us this wealth. But we have to become qualified to receive it. Gurudev is waiting to give us this transcendental wealth, but we have to become mature enough to receive it. Gurudev says that, oh, a father wants to give his young son so much wealth, but the bo it was just a boy. So he, what's he, he's not going to use it properly. Let him grow up and be mature, understand and appreciate the value of what he's being given, and then he will give it to him. So Gurudev has this and he's waiting to give it to us. We just have to become ready to receive it. This temple, everything is there ready. It's all, it's all there. Are we ready to accept it and serve it? It's all ready to be manifested. Why? Because past, present, and future, really it's just one. In the spiritual time, in Krishna's abode, it's all, just, it's all there. It's all manifest. It's all present eternally. All the different prakosh, the dimensions of the spiritual reality, are all eternally present. So all Krishna's pastimes, every part of all his pastimes, eternally present in a different prakosh. Nishantalila. Naisha Lila, Madhyanik Lila, it's all manifest. The same way, destiny is such that it's all there. We have to become ready to receive it and to be present in it. Like the same thing, Mahaprabhu Lila. We want to enter Mahaprabhu Lila. Mahaprabhu Lila won't happen again. It's right now. But we're not ready yet to enter. If we're ready to enter Mahaprabhu Lila, we're there. Krishna Lila, we're there. But we have to become prepared. So that's our process. Sadhana Bhakti, the process to become ready and matured to enter into that divine reality. So we'll read a little bit. <clears throat> During his classes, 
Srila Gurudev sometimes recalled his past interactions with Acharya Keshari and how his spiritual master instructed him when he was a brahmachari first living in the mat. I just like this idea of like time is either your friend or your enemy. Everyone's always fighting against time. Why should we fight with time? The time we have, if we use it right, it's perfectly enough. Because we have infinite time. It's not that time is limited. Time is infinite. It's eternal. Even this life we're in, okay, you're going to die, no problem. You get another chance. You get another go. But it's limited in this life to teach us that sacrifice what is separate from Krishna and just hone in on what is my special rasa with Krishna. That's showing us Stai Bhav. Like, at the same time, I can't be Sakka Vatsalya. I can't be Krishna's friend, Krishna's mother, Krish like a mother, like a gopi. You have to become focused, one-pointed, exclusive. There's another, the next section talks about this. We have to become exclusive, one-pointed. And that's what Krishna is teaching us with this idea of time. No, what is the most important thing that I can sacrifice everything else for? Only Krishna. The gopis do like that. But these who tanvaya brat ribandivan ativalangate anta chutagata. Krishna, for your sake, family, social customs, husbands, everything, children, serving all these different things, my own body, my own, you know, shame, everything. Oh, Krishna, I'll give it up for you. This is what we we're trying to do. So, Gurudev said, <clears throat> I once asked Guru Maharaj, how can one attain perfect realization of the conception of the Goswamis and their literature? Guru Maharaj replied, The Guru Varga is eternal and their speech is likewise eternal. Neither can be touched by the effect of time. The three features of material time, past, present and future, are the very form of death grasping all. That's why time is the enemy of those who are demonic. Because they're against Krishna, so he appears. Those who have no faith in God, atheists, God appears in this for, as the form of death. When they die, he is time, destroying everything. So it's inevitable. It's the very form of death grasping all. Therefore, only when one goes beyond the influence of material time can he progress to the realm of God, where he will meet with the divine personalities and perfectly realize their immortal conceptions. You must transcend all relation with the mundane world and its conclusions, as well as all consideration of another's offering of honor or disrespect. Two things, two conditions here. You must transcend all relation with the mundane world and its conclusions, all material ideologies. I follow bhakti, but I'm also a radical feminist. I follow bhakti, but I'm also a white supremacist. I follow bhakti, and I'm going to go on Harinam with the BLM banner behind me. This is bhakti. Bhakti is environmentalism. Bhakti for the earth. All these material ideologies are covering, so if, they let, if you let them become a, an avritam, covering over bhakti, then bhakti is gone. Anukul, what is bhakti, right? Jnana, karma, adi, anavritam. Don't let it cover over your bhakti. So many people now are like, oh, I'm a Trump bhakta or another kind of bhakta. Then you're not a Krishna bhakti. You can only be one, you can be a bhakta of one thing. You can be devoted to one thing genuinely. The other things, okay, we try to, you know, don't let them cover over. You can basically, you know, be a good person. <laughs> but really, we have to, Is are these things that we are following really eternal conceptions of the Guru Varga or not? The Guru Varga is eternal, their speech is eternal, their conceptions are eternal, it's not affected by time. But to transcend time, you must transcend all relation with this mundane world and its conclusions. Bhaktisanta Prabhupada said, the general mass opinion is always wrong. Whatever the mass opinion is, right or left, there's flaw, it's flawed. If you want to understand the reality, you must approach the pure sadhu. Pure sadhu will teach you the actual truth. Also, if someone has merely accepted the dress of a sadhu, yet engages in frivolous activities, not endeavoring for objects beyond the effect of time, then association with such a person is greatly detrimental to one's sadhana. I have so many friends. There's a difference between, Gurudev said, association means attachment. So you can spend time with people, try to, to uplift them, be friendly with them. But it said, don't reveal your heart and your bhajan. 
and you're trying to help them, edify them, and you can be friendly. But association means with sadhus. Be attached to the lotus feet of sadhus. We'll finish here. There's a couple more paragraphs. This unfavorable association must be rejected by sincere practitioners. Asat sangatyag e vaishnavachar, stri sangiyeka sadhu a bhaktahina char. Those things which drag us back into Maya have to be rejected. That's the problem, is that we're trying to rebel. And when you try to rebel, you're outnumbered. If you're not if you're not re if you're rebelling, it means by definition you're outnumbered. Right? Otherwise, why would we be rebelling? If if you have like the Kordavas and the, the Pandavas, they were outnumbered. And they were rebelling against the Duryodhana, Dhritarashtra, you know, even though it was their rightful kingdom. But in Maya especially, we're out, vastly outnumbered. Why? Because 99% 9% of people want to stay in this world and have a nice life. Do they really want to be with God, serving in the eternal world? Maybe some people, but most people are going to try to drag you back down in very subtle ways, following bhakti. But what kind of bhakti? Body bhakti, mind bhakti, one body and another body bhakti. <laughs> they want to enjoy, so we must therefore associate with sadhus. Knowing the method to cross beyond the grasp of material time is the topmost learning. Otherwise, one's life will certainly be lost in vain. Realizing the effect of time, Grandsire Bhishma firmly situated himself in knowledge of the supreme truth, Bhagavan, and was thus not influenced by delusion at the time of the Mahabharata war, when all his relatives were engaged in a fratricidal war. He wasn't attached. No, everyone's going to kill them. You know, the, everyone's fighting to the death. He even chose a side against Krishna to serve Krishna, knowing that Krishna wanted him to, knowing that Krishna wanted the battle to take place ultimately to. The burden of, uh, lift the burden of the earth from so many demonic forces. So if he didn't side with Duryodhan, then Duryodhan wouldn't have any hope to fight. He wouldn't think that he had a chance. So Bhishma, even though he's one of the Mahajans, great devotees of Krishna, he went on Duryodhan's side and he was shooting arrows at Krishna and Arjuna. At the same time with so much rag for Krishna, with the mood of a beloved. He wasn't disturbed by this because he knew, ultimately, everyone is already dead. We are in this world as a walking corpse, but the soul is what is pure consciousness and it's just a passenger, just witnessing. And until we learn to follow bhakti, follow guru and sadhu, we don't become true agents. We're just passengers and time is passing according to karma and destiny. Until we decide, oh, now I'm praying to Krishna, please may, bring me closer to you, bring me closer to the truth. And we find the Sri Sadguru mentor. Gradually, we learn to try to truly be an agent of our own will, free will. Otherwise, we're just sucked up in this cycle. We cho we're in this. We chose to be on the machine of Maya, but now we're on the machine, just spinning around, spinning around, spinning around. So now we have to change the force of that. When in saintly association, one must develop love for God. Only then can he cross beyond the force of Maya. Hundreds of thousands of people came into the presence of Srila Prabhupada Sarasvati Thakur, but only those surrendered to him fully, without considering him to be a mere mortal, entered within the movement of Mahaprabhu. Simply coming into the physical association of pure Guru is not enough. You must have full faith in Guru, accept his conception, and endeavor to follow those conceptions in one's life. When Ravan abducted Sita, Jatayu saw him taking her away in the sky, and he fought with Ravan ready to give up his life for the service of Lord Ram. After Ravan cut his wings and he was on the brink of death, Jatayu called out, Haram, Haram. He had the mood. When will Ram come so I will be able to give him the news of Sita's whereabouts? And only then will I give up my life. Because of his servant's dedication, Ram quickly came and met Jatayu, who then told Ram of Sita's kidnap by Ravan and his effort to save her. And then he gave up his life in the lap of Ram. Such mamata, Gurudev is telling this story, such mamata, deep feelings of affection towards Krishna, towards God or towards Guru, that is the true symptom of bhakti. Param Gurudev, ready to give up his life without a second thought. I am not the center. Gurudev is the center. I truly, do I, we should love, you know, if we truly love Krishna, we learn to love ourselves in the sense that we're also, you know, we should take care of ourselves because it's also Krishna's. But we have to be ready to put 
Guru first, put Krishna first, put Sadhu first. Story of Kuresh and Ramanujacharya. He went to the the king was gonna. He knew the king was going to um, had a plot to kill Ramanujacharya, and he called him into his kingdom, summoned him to have a debate, and he was gonna kill him. So Kuresh, who looked like Ramanujacharya, said, "No, I'll go." And he had his eyes plucked out, and he was thrown down a cliff. And he thought, "Okay, he wanted that." He, instead of his Gurudev, he had so much devotion. This devotion is so pure. When it's really pure, what is the mood? Yuga Lamilan Sukara Kara and Jivana Charite Pari. I can give up my life for the pleasure of Radha Krishna. Not that they want me to die, but that that devotion is so pure, I will happily give it up just to please or just to serve my beloved. If that devotion is there, then Krishna becomes sold to that person. Krishna says, Vikriditam. We know that verse, but also the verse about Advaita Acharya. Oh, if you just have a little devotion for Krishna, he sells himself to you. He sells himself to you if you just have a little bit of pure devotion. Then he becomes your property. Mamata, he becomes yours. Krishna becomes your property. Then you can even give Krishna to other people. Then you can be guru. You sell yourself completely to Krishna, surrender completely to Krishna, he surrenders to you, then he's in your pocket. Oh, you want Krishna? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. Take Krishna. Oh, you want Krishna? Take Krishna. You want Krishna? Take Krishna. But if I don't have Krishna consciousness, how am I going to give it? But if we surrender to Krishna and He becomes our property, then we can also share this Krishna. Bhaja Krishna, Bolo Krishna, Bhaja Kuru Krishna, Shiksha. So Bhakti is not such a difficult thing. And Bhakti is not a forced thing. Bhakti is love. And real love means sacrifice also and willingness to sacrifice oneself for the object of one's love that is bhakti and so even if we think of time as krishna how much are we willing to sacrifice things that are against or up away from krishna anukulyasya varjanam pratikulyasya right what is the six symptoms of sharanagati anukulyena krishna anushilanam but no pratikulyasya varjanam we're giving up what is pratikul and accepting what is anukul. If we can do that, then we transcend time. If one has this mamata for guru, then he will never tolerate any wrongdoings, even opposed to bhakti, another interesting thing. If one has real mamata for guru and for guru's property, then the temple is gurudev's property, everything, then I have to do everything very nicely for, because that's gurudev's. So gradually we're trying to develop this proper mentality and truly be in service it's a gradual process we cannot run before we run we have to learn how to walk before we walk we have to learn how to crawl before we crawl we have to roll over <laughs> even krishna showed this krishna it's described in the bhagavatam first he rolled over and there was a festival 